everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's Randy, aka Voice of Persona, ASMR, and we're back with another playthrough of uh, World of Warcraft, the retail version. Ooh. Um, I'm going to be soft speaking for this video, so for those of you who wanted me to soft speak a little bit more, uh, you'll be very happy to know, very happy to know that I will be doing that for this video. So, without further ado, let's begin now, shall we? So, when we last left off, I was level 50, okay? I was level 50. We did a couple of quests in Darkshore. We're still in Darkshore, I think. Yes, we are. Okay. Darkshire. Part of Duskwood. Why did I say Darkshore? Where's Darkshore from? I don't know. But anyway, um, I played a little bit off screen. Uh, did some dungeons and stuff like that with my guildie. So I leveled up a little bit. But we still have plenty of quests to do. So we can just jump right into it. So let's walk outside. We actually have a quest to turn in. Believe it or not, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see my character a little bit better here. So, let's go turn this quest in. But as you can see here on the right-hand side, we've got a good amount of quests to do. Um, as, of, as always, if you hear any noise uh, from the street, I apologize. It's definitely a challenge. It's 8 p.m., mind you. So, it's nighttime. But sometimes the noise just permeates, nonetheless. But um, let's turn to this this into my boy, Victoria Prism Andras. I don't really know who he is, but let's find out. Were we able to convince Cesar Vol to lend us his monocle for our experiment? I guess I was. I don't remember what I did, but I guess I was. At last, the stargazing device is complete. Thank you, Valdar. Now I can continue my research nice I guess that's it and we're level 57 let's take a look at what other quests we have so I've got ogre thieves and this one is we have to return uh, Abercrombie's crate to Abercrombie a few weeks ago I was picking up herbs far from my house and a band of ogres attacked me I ran and I was forced to leave behind a crate of precious tools and herbs. After they chased me off, the ogres staggered or swaggered back to the ogre mound in southern Duskwood. I'm sure my crate is somewhere near the mound. Please, Valdar, retrieve this crate for me. I miss it sorely. So we're going to go and retrieve this gentleman's crate for him. It's the least we can do. Yeah, it's the least we can do. And if you remember the previous video in part one of this playthrough, um, which I will link in the description down below if you want to start from part one, it was raining quite a bit. And it uh, looks like today is uh, clear skies. A clear, gloomy night sky. So, not bothered by that at all. Let me clear this here. It's my DPS tracker. All right, here we are. This is my boy, Abercrombie. He is a the hermit. You need something? Do you have my crate? If so, then please give it to me quickly. Even though he sounds like need something. Thank the neck. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you, Valdar. You have more than, more than earned your reward. Uh, happy, happy nights ahead. This guy is sketchy. Mm. Thank the neck. Mm. Wonder what he could possibly mean by that. He couldn't possibly mean necromancers. Necromancy, could he? Of course not. Of course not. That's ridiculous. I don't even know why I'm thinking that. He looks like a trustworthy man, this guy. Look at him. Does he not look like someone you would trust your kids with? Exactly. My thoughts. Exactly. Out here on the outskirts of town, it's a wonder the walking dead haven't eaten me. In fact, just yesterday, a pack of ghouls was pounding on the walls of my tower. I want to make an effigy. 
and kind of scarecrow for ghouls. To do that, I need some ghoul rips, you know. But you, you can find plenty of them on the field, on the fitted corpses wandering. Uh, Manor, Mist Mantles, Grounds, north of Darkshire. Get the rips for me, and I will repay you with some coin. Have a good one. And that's my voice for him. So, let us go get these rips for him. Even though I'm fairly certain he is uh, a rather unsavory character that maybe, maybe, just maybe we can't, we shouldn't trust. But you gotta keep an open mind and an open heart. You know? You just gotta. So, let's go get ourselves some ghoul ribs from these fetid corpses. And with a little bit of that, some whirlwind action here. Raging blow, execute. Yeah, done, son. Ghoul rib. That's one. Um, let me do this too. Want to lower the sound just a little bit more. I can't imagine the fighting is too relaxing. If I'm going to be honest. So. Too far away. There we go. So you don't really need to listen to the combat, honestly. It's kind of unnecessary, I think. I require Thanks, Lay Dertrin. If that is your real name, sir. I Here's another rage. fetid corpse. Boom. Raging blow. Raging blow. Execute. Done. Lay Dertrin. He's one step ahead. Must get closer. Raging. Oh, it's rampage, rather. Excuse me. Raging Blow is the second move right here. Uh, over here, as you can see. Do -do -do my need to target Done. first. Bum, bum, bum. Wait, I need to loot him. Oops, I almost forgot. Ghoul Rib. Got it. Okay. Too far away. Do -do -do -do. Execute. Rampage. Execute. And then Victory Rush. Victory Rush. Forgot the name of some of the moves. Um, but, yeah, pretty much, I'm going to be honest with you guys, the only time I really play World of Warcraft these days is uh, when I am making a video for you guys. I don't really play too much these days, you know. Um, I'm mostly playing, I'm playing a variety of games, but World of Warcraft is not really at the top of the list, you know. A lot of you like these videos, particularly the World of Warcraft videos, so I make them for you guys. But uh, yeah, I'm playing Fallout 4, fantastic game, really enjoying it. I'm playing a little bit of Skyrim. Uh, I recently started playing Oblivion for the first time. Yeah, never played Oblivion. Um, I got it that there was like a humble bundle sale, um, and Oblivion and uh, Morrowind were both seven bucks so really good deal i purchased both uh, and i'm planning on playing morrowind as well at some point uh, but oblivion i'm really enjoying as well um where are these ghouls i'm uh, a knight i made a knight and i'm uh, currently at the beginning of the quest line and i'm really enjoying it the one thing I noticed that's different about Oblivion compared to uh, Skyrim is the game is a lot more, it seems a lot more like a uh, classic RPG. And the quests are more, um, they're more interesting, I would say. Because, let's be honest, the bulk of Skyrim's quests are basically go kill this person this demon, whatever it is, go kill this thing inside this dungeon. Go do that. And that's it. Uh, but immediately what I noticed is the first quest that I got when I got to the Imperial City is I talked to a shopkeeper and she was talking to me about uh, um, sh another shopkeeper named Thorinar. I even remember his name. Who owns a shop but his prices are so cheap that he's pretty much running everybody else out of business. And so she, the shopkeeper, she suspects foul play. 
And so she wants me to go investigate to find out how is he able to price his goods so cheaply? Where is he getting his goods from? And so I start to follow him and I find out that he's meeting with another guy um, who is supplying him with these goods. So now I have to, you know, well, who are these guys? Now I have to follow this new guy and find out where he's getting the goods from and ultimately figure out how he's able to price his goods so cheaply most likely it's foul play and he's doing something illegal or nefarious um, and you see what I mean right that's a very detailed sophisticated quest that deals with like economics and legality and things like that I haven't seen anything like that in Skyrim for the most part you know, the most sophisticated quest that you really get is, uh, you know, the Civil War quest line, I think, with the Stormcloaks and the Empire, which, don't get me wrong, it's enjoyable, but it's definitely, it's not to say that the story is not complex, but they tell it in a way that makes it seem dumbed down, you know what I mean? At least that's the the my inclination you know that they're telling the story in a very simple way to reach a more mass wide audience right? I, I think that's what's happening Curla um, alright that's all the ghoul rips let's go return it to our friend who's definitely not going to betray us um, and so that's kind of what I noticed immediately is that Oblivion definitely doesn't hold your hand as much and it's less dumbed down and from what I have heard from Elder Scrolls fans, I like how I'm talking about another game while I'm playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> from what I've heard about, uh, about Morrowind from Elder Scrolls fans is that it is actually even better than Oblivion and Skyrim. So I'm actually going to make my way towards Morrowind last uh, for the ultimate experience. Um, okay, let's go to do that there. Um, and I'm excited for that as well. Um, I'm told that it's a very complex animal. Um, I'm told that it's a very complex animal compared to Skyrim. So I'm excited to try that. Let's talk to Tobias here. And get ourselves another side quest. What's your story? Oh, he, okay. Wait, let me hear his voice again. Up, eh? Okay. I got a bad feeling. I'm here because I received a letter from my brother Stalvin, who I haven't seen in years. On arriving here, I was told that he was dead. The entire town refuses to offer any ex further explanation. Any mention of this name is met with terror and suspicion, as if I didn't have enough of that myself. I'm afraid of what will happen if my frustration and anger grows any further. I beg you, help me get to the bottom. This. Implore Clerk Daltrey for any information he may have on my brother. Watch your back. I watch your back. I was like leaning between Northern English and Southern American <laughs> somehow, as if that was uh, possible. Um, do, 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 do. We will uh, take care of that in a minute, but let's continue with our main path there. But, yeah, so, been playing Fallout 4, Oblivion, and then Skyrim. Um, and quite enjoying it, I have to say. I used to play a lot of MMORPGs, but I got, uh, you know, burned out, shall we say. And uh, I think that single-player RPGs are just better. At least I think they're better currently for me right now because you get more freedom. You know, you don't have to worry about other people telling you how to play the game or ruining the experience for you. You know, you just play how you want. It's your own little sandbox to play in. And I like that. So, hello, Abercrombie. And of course, as customary, I'm getting messages on my phone. Because uh, it wouldn't be a video if someone didn't decide to do that while I'm recording. So, Hello. I'm sure you can find plenty of rims in Ravenhill as well, but you might not want to wander so far at night. Ah, thanks. These will do just the trick to definitely not betray me. Take this note to Elo Ebonlock, the mayor of Darkshire. 
he and I are old friends, and when he reads it and discovers what you did for me, I'm sure he'll be just as happy as I am. <laughs> anyway, thanks. See you around. That was definitely not an evil laugh, right? That was, I'm sure, very uh, wholesome and pure. Definitely, again, I don't get any sense that he's going to betray us whatsoever. Let's keep going. I wanted to look at her sword. Is she a uh, death knight? Yes, she is. She's a death knight. Death knights are basically warriors that are edgelords. Let's be real, guys. I mean, come on. But, um, yeah. I've been playing those games, and I've been stuck in quarantine. I'm kind of over it at this point, you know? getting tired of all the masks <laughs> it's gotten to the point where i don't even want to go outside because i just see people with masks and it's depressing so i'm just like meh but uh you know what can you do you can't control that type of stuff so you might as well not really let it bother you too much i think so if you find yourself stuck in a rut thinking about things that you can't control kind of just try not to as much you know easier said than done of course but if you can Try to put it out of your mind because there's only so much you can control, and uh, we're only we're only on this earth for a short period of time. You know, my uh. How are hold you? Hold on a second. Can I help you? You want to know about Stalvin? Hmm. You're not the first. You know, we get outsiders coming through asking about him every so often. Always outsiders. Everyone who lives here knows better. You're out of luck anyway. I'm missing half the archives. A feral worgen broke into the town hall not a few nights ago and uh, tore the place to shreds. The documents you'll want are probably strewn all across Brightwood Grove by now, deep in the woods to the west. Not worth it if you ask me. Safe travels. Safe travels. Well, we're gonna do it anyway. Um. And there is another quest we have to turn in over here to the Lord. Hello, Abenok, Maya, Darkshire. Need help? A letter. What's this all about? Ella looks at the letter and immediately pales. You fool. You've doomed us all. <laughs> You're not the first fool to be manipulated by Abercrombie. That doddering old man is known as the embalmer to us. He's a vile necromancer and a blight upon this town. And now, sewn together and given life by the very materials you brought him, his horrible creation approaches. That hideous creature will be upon us in mere moments. If you have any heart, Valdar, you'll help the Night Watch drive off the abomination and save our town. Slay Stitches. For the Alliance. All right, dude, we got this. Don't worry. But um, I was gonna say, um, my very special. Lady GF, a friend of mine, friend of mine. My, uh, well, what shall we call her? Let's call her GF. <laughs> I'm acting like I'm 12 years old. There are stitches. Let's get them. Must get closer. This shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. But, uh, as I was gonna say... Oh, actually, this is a little tougher than I thought it was gonna be. Let me jump out real quick and zoom in. Um, she told me something that I thought was very... Uh, I'm getting hurt pretty badly. A very intelligent sort of perspective. Um, what's the point on uh, focusing on things that you can't change? Oh, fuck, I'm gonna die. Okay. Sorry, I almost died. I didn't expect that to be that difficult. That was probably meant to be a group quest. Um, she told me, you know, there's there's very little point to, to focus on negative things that you can't change because it's not going to make your life any better. All you can really do is focus on things that make you feel good, things that you can impact in a positive way. And spend your time focused on that because that's what's going to give you more happiness in life and I think that's a very astute and intelligent perspective 
and a lot of people can learn from that because we have a lot of people that are walking around with a sort of you know hardcore political mindset shall we say and they are uh, well they're not very you know well met pleasant to be around shall we say right um, thank the light he's gone I'll say you've made men's by helping save the lives of those here at Valdor. Nice. Cool. Um, a lot of people walk around with their, let's say, knee-deep in politics, walking around with this false badge of justice. And uh, it's very exhausting to be around. And uh, she is not one of those people, so... Let's apply this look. I don't like it. I think it looks good. He's not one of those people. And it's very refreshing for me. Um, it's a positive sort of influence on me, I would say. So for those of you who maybe feel like you're just surrounded by negativity, it's a cliche saying, but sur surrounding yourself with people who don't consume toxicity on a daily basis is important, I think. It really does change your mood. It really does change your mindset. You know, the toxic energy, even if it's not malicious in nature, it's going to affect you, whether you realize it or not. You know, um, you surround yourself with more positive people, then you will. Uh, You'll just, it'll rub off on you in the best way possible. But that's my little rant. Um, collect a bundle of shredded letters. Here we go. Let's get these letters over here. Yep, this is it. I feel like I'm going to get attacked right now. No, guess not. That was easy. Literally just run, just go over here, pick up the quest, or pick up the letters, and get out. <laughs> Let me put my mount on, actually. Get on my mount. And zoom on out of here, baby. Ah, refreshing. So, all in all, a pretty uh, productive quest. We're almost 58, by the way. It's not too bad. Not too uh, bad. Let us turn. Hey there. Look, sir, I really don't want any trouble. By the light, you actually went and got it. I'm shocked. I suppose I owe you thanks for returning it to the archives. And we are 58. Hmm. If you're that serious about this, I'll help you, Veldar. I know where the other documents must be. I'm just too terrified to do anything about it. There's only a few places that those horrible night bane beasts gather when they're not prowling the forest. One of them's the Rotting Orchard to the south. You know, they use buildings there as if as their dens, so if they haven't just eaten the other documents, you might find one there, but you'll have to search their lairs thoroughly, I wager. See you later. See you later. Well, Let's go search their dens, I suppose. We can just go down here. And, uh. Bu -bu 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 -bu. Alright, sorry. I had a little notification on my computer screen asking me to scan for hardware updates. Boom. Alright, let's keep going this way then. Boom, 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 boom. my song. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's turn here. Make a hard left to the Rotting Orchard. And uh, 
Let's see what's going on over here. Got some night bane stalkers. Let's eliminate them really quick. Get out of here. You filthy beast. And we'll feast and we'll feast and we'll feast, feast, feast. Okay. Do, do, do. That's from the Grinch. <laughs> Jim Carrey, the Jim Carrey version. I guess you were wondering where I got that uh, random inspiration from. Do, 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 do. Rampage. And execute. Peace, homie. Bop. All right, we're going to go in here and probably get ambushed by some sort of unsavory character. And, um, all right. Oh, here it is. Let's get this piece of scrap of paper. Torn journal. Nice. Looks like whoever was here protecting the journal was killed already, so. Lucky for me. All right, guys. Let's get back on our mount here. And, uh, let's make our way back to Darkshire. 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 You know, one thing I don't understand about um, the police in my neighborhood is that they're always, they always turn their sirens on, but my street doesn't have anybody blocking them. There's no traffic on my street, really. So it's kind of pointless for them to do that, in my per perspective. I'm actually getting quite hurt because there's three of them. Rampage. Boom. Let's do this. Execute. Boom. And victory rush. So you see here, if I use Whirlwind, right, as you can see here, Whirlwind, and uh, I know the little tooltip is blocked by my face, hi, but I'll read it to you. Uh, Whirlwind says that you unleash a whirlwind of steel striking all the enemies within 8 yards for 120 physical damage. But the really cool thing is, it causes your next two single strike. Uh, attacks to strike up to four additional targets for 50% of the damage. So what does that mean? What it means is if I run into a group of enemies and I use Whirlwind and I hit four of them, this means that I will hit an additional four targets with a single target attack for 50% damage. So let's say uh, enemy number one I decide to use Rampage on, he's going to get hit with 100% of the damage, which is 658 for now in this case and the rest of them will do 50% of that so let's say around 300 something will be spread across the other three or four targets pretty cool stuff huh and so that's how you do better damage more um, DPS damage per second there's some math involved really but it's very basic it's really simple but you know and in the case of dungeons and raids and World of Warcraft, you are often dealing with hordes of enemies, or mobs as we call them. And so it's very rare that you're going to be fighting a one-on-one -on -one enemy most of the time. With You know, you have the bosses, and aside from the bosses in, in these dungeons and raids, for the most part you're fighting mobs. So this is a very handy, you know, one-two punch combo to really get some good DPS output, which is why I like the warrior, which is why I always pick warrior, which is why I have two badass axes right now. It's too far away. Although, oh, this guy's a warrior too. See, I like his sword actually. Can we take a look? Wait, no. See you I want to see your sword, dude. Oh, God damn it! Got the stupid notification again. Ah, oh, you bastard! I just wanted to see your sword. Why'd you have to leave? following him. Sorry, I just want to know what kind of sword he has. Where is he? Here he is. How do I inspect? Am I not able to inspect anymore? Did I forget how to play this game? Greetings. Huh. Weird. He's gonna think I'm being creepy at this point. Uh, wait. Wait. Damn it, I can't inspect them. Did they change something in this game? I wouldn't be surprised if somebody cried. You know, like I keep in getting inspected by someone. Man. <laughs> anyway, uh, what up, clerk? Good day to you. You're back in one piece, I see. This was all you found? Mm, that's bad news, I'm afraid. 
This isn't all of it. You should let it go, Valdar. The only place left to look is Roland's Doom. That's the mine south of town, and the largest lair of Morgan and Duskwood. Nobody in Darkshire has ever made it back from that place alive. In fact, some of the records I have here imply that that's where the monsters first came from. Who knows what evil's lurking in there. Please, Valdar, just give it up. Let's just forget about this whole thing. Never speak of it again. Naturally, I'm going to completely ignore his warning, and I'm just going to go do it. <laughs> in typical uh, MMORPG fashion, we are not concerned with his warnings. We just want that fat loot. You know what I'm saying? We want that fat, fat loot. So let's go and do it. standard stuff again this poses zero challenge you know it's like brain dead combat super easy there's no challenge whatsoever really and uh you know it's just super easy ridiculously easy they just turn into a worgen okay anyway it takes no effort you know and this is uh criticism that I have of video games. Let me do this really quick. Take care of them. Doom, doom, doom. This is a criticism that I have of video games, and I'm sure many of you share the same sentiment, and that is video games get streamlined and dumbed down in order to appeal to the lowest common denominator because that's how you make the most money. Makes sense from a business perspective. But if you've ever wondered why Skyrim is so flashy but lacks so many features compared to Oblivion and then even more so compared to Morrowind, shut up, compared to Morrowind, it's because um, that's how you appeal to more people. There's a reason Skyrim had, you know, was way more profitable. It's just the way that it goes. How do I turn off the... Uh, Really obnoxious. Do, 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 do. Error speech. Thanks. I don't need that. She needed to get rid of that. Otherwise, he was going to keep, uh, you know, complaining that he needs to get closer. Um, you know, and, you know, World of Warcraft, right? There's a reason why Classic is different from Retail. It's all about accessibility. Game design is now tied very closely to accessibility, profits, um, making as much money as possible for shareholders. You know, and the art of it has been lost in that, I think. I think it's a shame. Games are very much about... Because it used to be that games were uh, made for the love of the game, and, you know, a lot of it was that video games were considered to be for kids and targeting children primarily so it was okay to create a game that was incredibly time consuming a la runescape a la world of warcraft classic you know because kids had more time on their hands but now with video games being more mainstream and socially acceptable adults are playing and they have limited time and so how do you keep how do you keep the adult engaged for as long as possible how do you get the adult to buy a game um, that they're going to sink their teeth into when they have a full-time job, when they have responsibilities and kids and, you know, significant others and, you know, a life. You dumb it down. You streamline it. Um, and I think that's a shame because... I don't like simplicity in video games. I prefer more options. I prefer more customization. I don't like to have my hand held, you know. I don't like to feel like the game is treating me like I'm an idiot. 
you know, and that's what I feel like a lot of these games do, is they kind of hold your hand and treat you like you're a moron. Um, and I don't really appreciate that. <laughs> but, you know, what can you do at the end of the day, right? I know you told me not to do it, but I did. I'm sorry. You need something? <sighs> told you, Valdar. It's not worth pursuing. You actually went and got it. I don't know whether to call you brave or insane, but once again, my archives thank you. You've recovered everything. Everything except the last page, which I've got right here. Don't look at me like that. You'll understand when you read it. Some even say it's cursed. You know. In fact, I was relieved when the organ broke in and made off with these. Take it. Take all of it. In fact, I thank you for recovering my archives, but I don't want anything to do with these ever again. Please, just leave me be. So take the legend back to Tobias. Nush. Mismantle. Let's go take it to him. He is fairly close by. Bum, 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 bum. Cool dragon, dude. Aww. <laughs> It's actually really cute. Look at this cutie pie. <laughs> the cute dragon. Anyway, let's keep going this way. Tobias, how you doing, brother? Oi. You're back. Did you find anything about my brother? No, I can't thank you enough. I had hoped for this to be a joyous reunion, but... The more I learn, the less glad I am to have asked. But I must know. This can't be. My brother was strong, willed, but such vileness, such sickness and violence, bloody evil. Tobias brings hands his face, averting his gaze. I must have answers. I need to know how I got that letter. I need to know if Starvin really did this. I need to know why. Take my ring, Valdar. Bring it to Madame Eva. That woman is a follower of the old arts and makes no secret of it. Call it madness, but I'll try anything at this point. Farewell. Farewell. Let's go to Madame Eva. Boobity boops. Boom. She is going to be in this build right here. This guy's taking a break, having some ale perhaps. Alright, here she is. What dark whispers guide you to my door, warrior? How interesting. It's been quite a while since I've seen such a thing, such a ring. I'm afraid I cannot give Tobias the answers he seeks, but I can't help you find the only person who can. Stalve and Miss Mantle. Take the ring into the woods to the north to Manor Miss Mantle, where Stalvin's body was buried. Enter and hold the ring before you. Let the waning moon pour its light through the ring, and the spirits will answer your call. Take heed, Valdar. The questions of the living can offer more comfort than the answers of the dead. Be careful. Ooh. Spooky. It's a very spooky, ominous uh, warning, isn't it? I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be okay. Dippy dippy doop boop stop. I ain't worried about nothing. Let's go over here. All right. Let's shine the ring. Oh. My ring. Who holds my family ring? Taloa, is that you? Brother. We've been walled up for far too long. Tobias. Tell me it's not true, brother. Tell me you didn't die a murderer. It's all true, brother. Every word. You doubted it, but why? How could you? You know why. Surely you felt anger. Anger is so foul and vicious that it makes you want to sh tear someone to shreds. Aren't you feeling it right now? No. No. Stop it. Nice. Oh, let's help him. Seems like it's kind of his fight. It's not really our place to get involved, but uh, if we let him fight, we're going to be standing here all day. So I'm just going to put him away right now. And, uh, you know, call it a day here. 
for him. But we'll try to get through this quest line before we call it a night. And let's loot his brother's dead body. Cool. Nice. All right. Then he ran away. Let's go turn this in then. Sorry, Tobias. That's the way the cookie crumbles. You know what I'm saying? Master Harris may have been right. I would have been better to leave the past behind. I've got a new life now. Whether it's that of a monster or a man is up to me. As for you, I cannot thank you enough for your assistance. Regardless of the outcome, please take this with my thanks. Nice. Let the light of the new moon guide you. We did it, ladies and gents. We did it. Um, now we're at 41 minutes, and the next quest starts in Stranglethorn Vale. So it seems like we're done, actually, with Darkshire, from what I can tell, right? I don't see any other quests here. Um, let me double check to make sure, but yeah, the next one is Northern Stranglevale. So we have uh, successfully finished Darkshire. And to me, that seems like a perfect uh, perfect way to end the video. I cannot see a better ending than that. We finished a whole area. So, the cool thing about that is in the next video, part three, we will be in a completely different area. Stranglethorn Vale is uh, more of a jungle sort of environment. And so we will uh, have a nice different sort of backdrop ambience, if you will. So let's go into the inn over here. Make sure. Yeah, we'll do that next. It's fine. I'm okay with that. But let's uh, let's grab ourselves a nice mug of ale, shall we? Moonshine. See you later. Well, let's ask the innkeeper, innkeeper, bartender. Okay. Yeah, let's ask the innkeeper. Maybe she has some ale that we can drink or something. Um. It appears that they are not a non-alcoholic tavern, which is a shame. I don't really understand that. Well, I guess Moonshine is well, it's a quest item. I don't even think we can drink that, can we? Huh. But you can get drunk in this game. I know that for a fact. So, um, I'm not really sure why there's no ale available or beer or anything like that. But, uh, well, nonetheless, let's go. Uh, for specific? Maybe we'll have some milk instead. <laughs> let's go here. Oh. Well, this is awkward. I kind of, sir. I think this was supposed to be my room. Looking for something specific? Well, I'm kind of looking for you to leave my my room, but uh, you know that's okay. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we can't go in here either. This is awkward. Um, this one seems to be empty. Okay. So, uh, nobody come in here. This is my room now. I've rented it, and uh, I'm going to uh, sleep here. So. If you guys don't mind, of course, you know, that's, it should be cool. Because, the, you know, there's no doors here or anything like that. So, um, does it sleep? There we go. And, uh, I guess I'm just going to sleep like this because I'm dramatic. What can I say? Pillows are overrated, you know. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my soft speaking. I'm not very used to doing it, so I want to try doing it a little bit more. Let me know what you thought of this video and the song speaking, and uh, I will put part one down in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good night, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.